Hi, Math App students. Sorry, I could not be with you today. This video will cover the notes for days 16 and 17. So we'll go through both sets of notes and then you'll have time to work on the homework associated with these two sets of notes. In these two sets of notes, we're gonna learn the last three kinds of equations that we need to know of the other type. So the first half of the notes will be type three, which is radical equations. And then day 17, we'll cover the last two kinds of equations, which are rational and then quadratic-like. So let's just jump right into this first part, which is going to cover radical equations. If you recall, a radical equation, I just mean any equation that has a square root in it. So there are five steps to solve these equations. We're going to isolate the radical, and then we're going to square both sides. If there's still a radical, you're going to have to repeat that process. So you're going to have to isolate the radical again and square it. Then you'll have to solve and check your solutions. Two things that are important here. First of all, checking your solutions, similar to an absolute value equation. So similar to absolute value, you're going to have to plug your answers back in and show that they work. Other thing I want you to know is this step three we can ignore. We are not going to do any examples where there's more than one radical. So let's just jump right into a few examples. Example one, we can see as a radical equation because it has a radical. Step one is already done because the radical is alone. So what we're going to do then is we're going to square both sides. On the left side, the square root and the square undo each other, and we're left with just 2x minus 3. On the right side, 7 squared gives us 49. And now we're just down to a normal equation that we know how to solve, a linear equation. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 52. So then x equals 26. I forgot to mention, you might need a calculator. So if you have a graphing calculator that you want to get out or you want to use your phone, it might be helpful. Uh, if not for these notes, then for when you're working on the homework. Now, we are not finished. In order to finish this problem, we need to plug that answer back in to the very original equation. Very original. You do need to show the work for this. So the homework when you're doing it, I want to see all the work written out that you checked your answers. So we get the square root of 2 times 26 minus 3 is equal to 7. Similar to absolute value, you cannot manipulate the equation at all. Simplify the left, simplify the right, see if they're equal. So this becomes the square root of 52 minus 3 is equal to 7, or the square root of 49 equals 7, so 7 equals 7. This answer checks out. For every radical equation in your homework, I'm going to expect to see work that you checked your answer. Okay, so let's do example B, which is going to be a little bit more work. Now, we do notice the radical is alone, so that's great. To get rid of it, we're going to square both sides. On the right side, again, the square root and the square undo each other, and we're just left with x plus 6. And on the left side, we're left with x squared. Now, this is a quadratic that we know how to solve. We can try to factor it, we can do quadratic formula, we can complete the square, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna to try to factor it. So, moving the x and the six over, I get x squared minus x minus six equals zero. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative six and add to negative one. That's negative three and positive two. Again, as a reminder, because it's a one x squared, we can jump right to our factors. We don't have to split the middle. So setting both of those equal to zero, that gives us answers of three and negative two. Again, though, we have to check our answers. We cannot just assume that both of them work. So let's do that. We're gonna have to check both separately. I'm gonna start with checking x equals three, again, back into the very original equation. So I get three equals the square root of three plus six. So 3 equals the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is in fact 3, so that works out. Then if we check negative 2, we get negative 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2 plus 6. So we get negative 2 is equal to the square root of 4. Here's where we need to be careful. The square root of 4 is just plain old 2. It is not plus or minus 2. It's plain old 2. At this point, this does not check out. This does not check out. So, negative 2 does not work. Negative 2, if you remember, is called an extraneous solution. We didn't do any math wrong, it just doesn't check out with our equation. 
Now, we might be asking ourselves, why is there no plus or minus? Here's what I need you to know. If I just ask you, what's the square root of 9? The answer is 3. But if I tell you x squared equals 9, where you put this square root in, then you get plus or minus. So if the square root is already there, like it was in this problem, the square root is already there, you just get a positive answer. When you put a square root in, you get plus or minus. So that's the note for you. Okay, we have one last problem to do on this first set of notes. So let's look at example C. This one's going to be a little bit tougher. First, we notice right away the radical is not alone. So we're going to have to get it alone. I'm going to add x to both sides. So I get 2. The square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to x plus 1. Do not square things just yet. The radical is not alone. To get the radical alone, I'm going to have to divide by 2. So I get the square root of 2x minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 over 2. That was step 1. Now that the radical is alone, I can square everything to get rid of that radical. So on the left side, the square root and the square undo each other, and we're left with just plain old 2x minus 1. On the right side is where we need to be careful. The numerator is x plus 1 squared, which I'll address in a minute. And then when we square the 2, we get a 4. So the question is, what do we do with that numerator? First, I need us to recognize we cannot distribute the squared. Because there's addition in the parentheses, we cannot distribute the squared. Instead, let's consider this off to the side for a minute. If we remember, x plus 1 squared, we've done this before, that means x plus 1 times x plus 1. Well, this we've done. We've done the box method, we've foiled, uh, we've drawn the arcs in. So whatever method you want to use is fine. So if I make sure I get all my terms, I get x squared plus x plus x plus 1, or x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's then what is going to go back into our equation. Now, we're all done with the radicals we just need to solve. We've talked about before, we don't like fractions, so let's get rid of the fraction. If I multiply every term by 4, the reason I would do that is on the right side, the 4s cancel, leaving me with just x squared plus 2x plus 1. On the left side, when I multiply by 4, I get 8x minus 4. So now, similar to the previous example, this is just a quadratic that we need to solve. So let's move everything to the same side. The 8x and the 4. When we do, we get x squared minus 6x plus 5. So again, looking for two numbers that multiply to 5 and add to negative 6, that would be negative 5 and negative 1, which gives us answers of 5 and 1. Now, you are not done. Don't quit there. If you're going to get all that far, make sure you check your answers back in the very original equation. So that's what I'm going to do up top. I'm going to start with x equals 5. So I get 2 times root 2 times 5 minus 1. Minus 5 is equal to 1. So this is 2 root 10 minus 1 minus 5 is equal to 1. So 2 times the square root of 9 minus 5 equals 1. Again, don't manipulate the equation. Don't move anything from one side to another. So this becomes 2 times 3 minus 5 equals 1, which hopefully we can see is true. It ends up being 6 minus 5. So that one's good. If we check x equals 1, we get 2 times the square root of 2 times 1 minus 1. Minus 1 equals 1. So this is 2, square root of 2 minus 1 minus 1. Or 2 times the square root of 1. So 2 minus 1 equals 1, which also checks out. So both of those answers work. Okay, I know I went through that quickly, and I might have lost us on something. That's okay. If I did, pause the video and look back. See if you can listen to wherever I lost you uh, and work through the problem again. 
Make sure that you fully understand what's going on in day 16 before you move on to day 17. At this point, this was half of the notes. We still have day 17 to finish. My suggestion to you would be at this point that you take a little bit of a mental break. In class, I would have given you a break. So if that means taking out your phone, going to the bathroom, something like that, do that. And then you have the option of either you can finish the notes, which would be watching day 17, or after your break, you can start the homework for day 16 and 17. Ultimately, you're gonna to have to watch day 17. So if you choose to start the homework, that's great, and then come back and finish day 17. If you have any questions, please make sure you set up a time to come in and meet with me. Enjoy your break. Come back when you're ready to finish the notes. Okay, welcome to the second half of today's notes, which is day 17. Day 17 covers the last two kinds of equations that we need to learn how to solve. The first one is type four, which is a rational exponent equation. And then the last type, type five, is an equation in quadratic form. So it's an equation that's not quite quadratic, but can be made to be quadratic. So these last few problems are the last of today's notes, and then you'll have time to work on your homework. So let's jump in with type four. As a reminder, when I say rational exponent, an example of that is something like x to the power two-thirds. So it's a variable to a exponent that is a fraction. As you can see, there are three main steps. The first one is like any equation, you're isolating the quantity. So we're isolating x. We're going to get x to whatever power it is alone. Then we are going to raise both sides to the reciprocal power. That, I would say, is the hardest step to remember. And lastly, we'll solve. So like normal, I think this is easiest if we just see an example and go through it together. So let's look at example 1a. It says solve the rational exponent equation. We're going to need to get this x to its power alone. So start by adding 47 to both sides. And then we have 2x to the power 4 fifths. 115 add 47 is 162. Okay, that power applies only to the x, not to the 2. So we still have to get rid of the 2. So I'm going to divide by 2. So now I have x to the power 4 fifths is equal to 81. That was step one. We got x to its power alone. Step two now is we are raising both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power. Not opposite reciprocal, just reciprocal. So 81 to the power, 5 over 4. Okay, here's why we do that. If you remember, on the left side, a power to a power, so power to a power, we multiply them. So in this case, what happens is those powers cancel out and leave us with just plain old x. Well, then we have to figure out what 81 to the power 5 fourths is. So that's what I'm going to do over here. So that is, if we remember, the fourth root of 81 to the fifth power. So let's break down that fourth root of 81. So that's 9 times 9, 3 times 3, and 3 times 3. So if we remember then, fourth root means I'm looking for four at a time. So the fourth root of 81 then is just plain old three. Then I have to bring down that fifth power. Three to the fifth is 243. So that is my x value, 243. So that was one example. Let's go through another example. If we look at B, same idea, get this x alone. So I'm going to start by subtracting 4. So I get 5x to the power 3 fourths is equal to 40. Again, that power applies only to the x, not to the 5. So we need to get rid of the 5 and divide by 5. So I get x to the power 3 fourths then is equal to 8. Okay, so that was step one. We got x alone. Now what we need to do is raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So reciprocal meaning flip. We're not changing the sign, we're just flipping. So this is the power of 4 thirds, and this is the power of 4 thirds. And again, the reason we do that 
is when we multiply these two powers, we get 1. We get just x to the first. And then we have 8 to the power 4 thirds. So again, that's the one that we're going to have to calculate. That's the same as the cube root of 8 to the fourth power. Now, cube root of 8, you might be able to just do that in your head. If you can't, break it down. We have 4 times 2 and 2 times 2. Cube root means we're looking for 3 of a kind. So the cube root of 8 is just 2, but then don't forget about that fourth power. So 2 to the fourth gives us 16. So that is our answer for B, x equals 16. So anytime you see a rational exponent, you see a variable to a exponent that has a fraction in it, that's when you're going to follow these steps. Again, get your variable alone, raised to the reciprocal power. Okay, last thing we have to talk about today is type 5, the fifth type of equation, which is a, an equation that's in quadratic form. So it's not quite quadratic, but we can make it quadratic. Okay, so we see the steps below. We are going to make a substitution. That's the biggest key here. So we're going to make a substitution, which will give us a quadratic. You will then factor that quadratic, substitute back, and solve. Now, I know that that isn't super clear, so again, I think the best way to go about this is just to do an example. If we look at example 2a, this is not quadratic. Remember, quadratic is something of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, highest power is an x squared. In example 2a, this is not a quadratic. It has an x to the fourth. But here's what we can do. Whatever that middle term is, you're going to introduce a new variable for that. Normally, I like to use u. So I'm going to call u x squared. Now, here's what I find then. When I take that u equals x squared and I square it, I get u squared is equal to x to the fourth. So that means that this x to the fourth is u squared. So what I can do now is I'm going to rewrite this equation, but that x squared I'm going to call it u, and that x to the fourth I'm going to call it u squared. So what that gives us then is 4u squared minus 25u plus 36 equals 0. This is now a quadratic. This is something that we can factor. This is a problem where we're going to have to split the middle. We're looking for two numbers that multiply to 144, but add to negative 25. Remember, 144 comes from here. So it multiplies to 144, but adds to negative 25. So you might need a calculator for that one. I will tell you it ends up being negative 9 and negative 16. So this middle term, like we've done before, gets split to negative 16u and negative 9u. Bring down the 36, bring down the 4u squared. And now just keep going like normal. On the left side, I can take out a 4u, and I'm left with u minus 4. On the right side, I can take out a negative 9, and I'm left with u minus 4. So I end up then with 4u minus 9, and u minus 4 equals 0. So u then is 9 over 4 and 4. Now, what we have to remember is we're not solving for u, we're solving for x. We're not solving for u, we're solving for x. So we have to go back to what is u equal to? What is u equal to? u is equal to x squared. So in place of u, we need to use x squared. So we know x squared is equal to 9 over 4, and x squared is equal to 4. So to get rid of the square, we take the square root. On that first one, when I take the square root of 9, I get plus or minus 3, and then the square root of 4 is 2. Second equation, when I take the square root of 4, I get plus or minus 2. So my answers end up being plus or minus 3 over 2 and plus or minus 2. Now, we should ask ourselves, should we have gotten four answers? Does it make sense to have gotten four answers? Yes, it does. If we look back at our original equation, we have x to the fourth. So remember, that tells us we should get four answers, which we did. Okay, so we have one more to do. 
This one's a little bit trickier because it has some fractions in it. Now, this is not like the first type of equation we did. We do see an exponent that's a fraction, but there are two x's here. So we're never going to be able to get x alone. But again, we're going to do a substitution. Whatever term is in the middle, you're going to call that u. So our u is x to the 1 3rd power. So then the question is, what is u squared? Well, if I take that u is x to the 1 3rd and I square it, I get u squared is equal to, here's where we have to be careful. We have a power to a power. We're not squaring 1 3rd. Power to a power means that we're multiplying. So in this case, we get x to the 2 thirds, which is what we should have gotten because that's our first term. That will always be the case. When you're making this quadratic, your middle term is going to end up being u, and your first term will end up being u squared. So now, using our u and our u squared, if we rewrite this equation, we get 3u squared minus 5u minus 2 is equal to 0. And now we're back to a split the middle problem. This is quadratic. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 5. So we should be able to see that's negative 6 and positive 1. Bring down the first term, bring down the last term. I can factor out a 3u and I'm left with u minus 2. I factor out a 1 and I'm left with u minus 2. So this then gives me 3u plus 1 and u minus 2. So I get then u is equal to negative 1 third and u is equal to 2. Okay, remember though, we're not finding u, we're finding x. We're not finding u, we're finding x. So we got to go back to what is u equal to? u is equal to x to the 1 third. So last thing we got to do is substitute that back in. So we get x to the 1 third is equal to negative 1 third, and we get x to the 1 third equals 2. Now we've talked about from the problems previously on these notes. To get rid of that, you raise to the reciprocal power. So to get rid of that 1 third, we raise to the reciprocal power, which is 3 over 1, or just plain old 3. Okay, so on the right side, these powers are going to cancel, and 2 to the third is just 8. The first equation, again, these powers will cancel each other out. In this case, we have to raise both negative 1 to the third power and 3 to the third power. So negative 1 to the third power gives us negative 1, and 3 to the third gives us 27. So in this case, we only get two answers, negative 1 over 27 and 8. Okay, those are all the types of equations that you're going to need to know how to solve. So you're going to need to be able to factor. You're going to need to be able to do those fractions, those rational equations, the ones with the roots, which we did earlier in these notes, and now these two. At this point, you should start the assignment for days 16 and 17, which is on the next page. So here is your assignment for days 16 and 17. This assignment right here. So it's page 120 and these problems. I know that it looks a little bit long, but they go pretty quickly. So the expectation is that you will have this done for next class. If you struggle with this assignment, I know it's difficult to have learned this material without me being in class. So if you've struggled, you need to email me and set up a time to go over what you can't figure out or whatever you're having problems with. Good luck, and I'll see you all next class.